How to set boundaries. This is a life skill. You definitely want to stick around for this. Hi, my name is Blair Amani. I'm an author, educator, and historian. I've worked in corporate America, I've worked for myself, I've been a freelancer, and if there's one thing I know how to do, it's set boundaries. So let's get smarter about that today. Get smarter with Blair Imani. Before we get started, this episode is brought to you by my Smarties on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Blair Imani, you can join me there. We have live Q and A's, exclusive content, and a whole host of stuff that I don't post anywhere else. So check that out and let's get into the lesson. Boundaries are the rules and guidelines that we set for ourselves and others in interpersonal interactions or relationships. I'm generally pretty good at setting boundaries and that's because probably my parents are like very into mental health and the idea of like, you know, bodily autonomy. Those things are very important lessons to know. But it's also important to understand that not everybody is able to set boundaries equally because we have systems of oppression. Systems of oppression dictate everything from power dynamics to politics politics of human interaction, the politics of literally who has access to power and resources. There's also things like sexism and racism. I mean, think about how many black women are often the ones to have to say, don't touch my hair. Because of racism and the idea of bodily autonomy not belonging to black people or racialized people, often having to say, don't touch my hair is an extra layer that black women have to set. And not just black women, but black folks of any gender identity. Another thing we see is with pregnant people. Don't go touching pregnant folks' bellies. That's a boundary that we should be able to set. That's so weird, y'all. So let's get into boundaries and those personal rules and guidelines that we have and why they're important. It's important to get smarter about boundaries because it's not just about setting them and reinforcing them, but also respecting them, which is what we're gonna cover first. When someone sets a boundary for us, it's not because we're being punished or because we're being cut out of their lives, but we could be punished and cut out of their lives if we don't respect those boundaries. When somebody sets a boundary for us, it means that they're communicating an opportunity to build trust. Now, let's talk about trust and respect. Respect is inherent. If you're in an interaction with me, we gotta respect each other. That includes when you're in the comments. But trust is something sacred. It has to be earned. It has to develop over time. And when we create boundaries, that is an invitation to other people to demonstrate their trustworthiness because it's hard to guess about how trustworthy someone is. And honestly, every interaction somebody has with another person is going to be unique than their interaction with somebody else. So. When we set our personal boundaries, it's not a punishment or something negative. It's an opportunity for us to be trustworthy on that person's terms with them. The best way to set boundaries and to respect the boundaries of others is with consent. Now it can be awkward to ask for consent every single step of the way in any interaction, but it's necessary. Can I shake your hand? Can I pat you on the back? Literally just ask because we don't know otherwise. Otherwise we're basing our assumptions and guesses for how to interact with people on systems that existed before we decided to participate in them. And sometimes we end up furthering those systems of oppression on accident. So it's just better to ask. And then when you get that answer from somebody, don't be upset when it's not the response you expected. If somebody doesn't want a handshake, enough, that's fine. If somebody doesn't want a hug, that's okay. It's not because they don't miss you or they don't want to see you. It could be because they just don't want to hug. It doesn't matter why somebody has a boundary. What's important to do is to respect and to invite people for opportunities to express those boundaries by asking for consent every step of the way. Let's learn how to set boundaries and how to reinforce them. Setting boundaries is so important. And yes, it can be awkward or kind of clumsy as you get used to doing it, but you're building the processes in your mind about how to do it. That's how we get better at something through practice and also determining that we can honestly say that we set boundaries on a regular basis. Boundaries can look like blocking somebody on social media, saying no, telling somebody your food allergies, things that are literally life and death. But it can also look like telling somebody you don't want a spoiler. Now, spoilers for those who aren't familiar are things that will spoil a TV show, a movie or a piece of media. And when something popular comes out, we're generally pretty good at being like, hey, no spoilers. And even asking, hey, have you seen that show yet? I don't wanna give you any spoilers. Oh no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay, then I won't give you any spoilers. Like we do that very often, but when boundaries relate to things like our personal autonomy, physical space, and when those things connect to power dynamics and even systems of oppression, sometimes it becomes harder to set boundaries. But let's walk through some various different ways of setting them. The first one is basically letting somebody know how you wanna be treated or not. I often do this. Sometimes I'll get people asking me inappropriate questions and I'll say, hey, that question's inappropriate, I'm not gonna answer it. Boom. But I'm also in a position where I'm able to set those boundaries and not face the consequences of them. 
in different situations, like for example, being catcalled, you're hard pressed to set a boundary with somebody who already is dehumanizing you by yelling at you across the street. And then you're supposed to say thank you or feel validated or feel more attractive because you're being harassed. In that circumstance, say whatever one liner you need to get out of that situation. When you can't set a boundary, it's not your personal failure. It's because we live in different power dynamics, different systems of oppression that prevent us from being able to tell others how we want to be treated. Another way of thinking about boundaries is decolonizing human interaction. That's something that Dr. Shea Kill McLean talked to me about. And so when we decolonize those human interactions, we're basically rewriting the scripts that have been written by European colonizers and dictated how we should and shouldn't treat each other and writing those on our terms. Not everybody wants their pregnant belly to be touched. Not everybody wants a hug. Not everybody wants a handshake. And we should make sure that we're asking about honoring people on their terms, not on ours. Because yes, the golden rule says, treat others the way you would wanna be treated. But the fact is we should treat others the way they wanna be treated. That's the key. And personal boundaries allow us to do that. How to set boundaries. Number one, know yourself and reflect on what you want and need from an interaction or relationship. Number two, Practice expressing your personal guidelines or boundaries. Number three, express your boundaries. Number four, remind people of your boundaries if possible, if or when they are not respected. And number five, respect your boundaries and the boundaries of others. I set personal boundaries often with my mom. And that can be really tough because my mom has a very strong personality and so do I. So sometimes those things can clash. But how do you set a boundary in a way that still maintains the relationship? Well, mutual respect is first. It's also a good idea to set boundaries in moments where it's not passionate or intense, like after an argument or in the middle of an argument, unless that boundary is, hey, I need to leave the space, this is uncomfortable. Luckily, I don't argue with my mom often. And when I do, we're pretty respectful. But when I set boundaries with her, sometimes it's related to her bragging about stuff that I've done on the internet internet or sometimes brand deals that I haven't even signed the paperwork for. In this case, she's being really enthusiastic and really excited, but sometimes it doesn't work out in the best way. So when I set boundaries, sometimes I'll give my mom exciting new news and I'll say, hey, and by the way, please don't share it until this date. That's a boundary I'm setting. And that's something that is pretty manageable. And sometimes it's hard to anticipate that other people might share information that you think is private, but we all come from different walks of life, different experiences and different backgrounds. In my mom's case, she's enthusiastic about the work that I'm doing. That's awesome and I really appreciate it. But at the same time, she also has to adhere to non-disclosure agreements. Setting boundaries looks different for absolutely everyone. And so while I can give you a guide map about how to set a boundary, it's gonna look different for everybody. Boundaries are key. And so not only do we need to respect other people's boundaries, but we need to become familiar and create this culture shift where we're not basing human interaction on the assumptions of what we thought was cool or what peer pressure says is cool, but what that person we're interacting with says is cool. A few more tips that I have when it comes to boundary setting is to rehearse. Talk it through with somebody. If it's something that's really high stakes, like say you need to set a boundary at work, practice that with a coworker that you trust. Practice that with people in your life. Practice that in the mirror. Just get used to saying it because the more familiar you get with saying things like, no, I deserve personal space. I don't deserve this treatment. But also considering your personal context, the better and the easier it gets. Boundaries are tough. Once we respect them and we learn to expect them, it gets easier and we need to set the expectation of getting used to hearing them from people and setting them for others. Having a culture of consent, having a culture that makes it just as easy to set boundaries about our bodily autonomy as it does about TV show spoilers. We can get there, it just takes practice, and I believe in you. I used to feel like setting boundaries was the worst thing I could do to somebody. I felt guilty because the fact is, as an educator, as a former organizer, I felt like People should be entitled to my time and space, but the fact is I need to sleep. And if my boundary looks like me telling somebody over direct message, hey, I'll get back to you, just message me in the morning. That's a boundary that I deserve to set because yes, that person might want a response right there and then, but they're communicating with me. And I also have to contribute to that interaction. It has to be on both of our terms, not just one-sided. So. Take the practice that you need to set boundaries. Anticipate what might go wrong in an interaction. Communicate what you need for it to go right and then respect the outcome of that interaction and hope that you can reinforce or remind somebody when it goes wrong. It's easy breezy, or at least it gets easier as time goes on. Boundaries are essential. We need them, otherwise we end up operating on the assumptions of long dead European colonizers. It's a lot better to operate based on the terms of the folks that we're actually in communication with. Let me know in the comments what boundaries you've set in your life. I'm sure you set a boundary today. It's very common, or at least in the last week, we set boundaries all of the time. 
if you block someone, that's a boundary. You decided, hey, I'd actually rather DM you my boundary than put it out on the social media. You didn't communicate that boundary, but it's one that you set for yourself. We all need boundaries. So let's talk about it in the comments below. What boundaries are you getting used to setting? And is it getting easier? Let me know. And I'll see you next time when we get smarter about something else. Well, Smarties, that's another episode of Get Smarter with Blair Imani. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you can be the first one to comment on my posts. And while you're here, check out one of my previous videos. Let's keep it going.